In medicine, like in everything else, there's huge swings of patient preferences and doctor preferences. I mean, back it, when there was cholera, people didn't believe in washing your hands. And there was a strong contingent of really reputable doctors who refused to do it. The same kind of thing has happened recently for linear excision surgery in the hair transplant world. There's some patients who will really benefit from a linear excision surgery where an FUE just really doesn't get them their optimal results. A lot of these things are hybrid surgeries, are females who can't afford to, who really need to move a lot of hair but can't afford to shave the back and the sides of their head. There's long hair FUE, but even that doesn't get as many grafts in one single surgery as a linear excision surgery or minimize the scarring. If you're looking at the exact numbers of how much scar you actually create with a linear excision surgery, it's on the order of about two and a half square centimeters. Whereas if you look at an average 2000 graft FUE surgery, that's 15, over 15 square centimeters. Now granted, it's in a different format, right? It's in a diffuse, multi-dotted, speckled pattern across somebody's head. So if you wear your hair particularly short, it helps to hide it a little bit. But if you're not somebody who ever shaves their head or wears their hair short, then a linear excision can be a better option. A linear excision doesn't work in some cases. Anyone who has a really tight scalp or who would be worried about having a scar be visible, even if it were a very thin scar, usually I say a linear scar should look like one of these lines on your hand then maybe that's not the procedure for you and FUE is the slam dunk choice. But there's a lot of instances where FUT, linear excision surgery, is a better choice for patients and it's better for your hair surgeon to be able to do both so that they can equally recommend whichever is the best for you. And sometimes they recommend both and we do a hybrid surgery.